Daniel is um, 12 and a half years old. He was sort of exhibiting um, aggressive behavior, some developmental delays, motoric difficulties, um, you know, emotional outbursts, and you know that's when I started to sort of had like that inner sense that something just didn't seem right. Israel may be known as the land of milk and honey, but you're smelling cannabis. Where is all this marijuana coming from? Israel's cabinet has approved a law to allow medical cannabis exports. Available via medical prescription, recreational use of cannabis is still only decriminalized. Israel today is on the edge of the technologies and the edge of producing those products. Today it feels like marijuana is everywhere in the whole land. I was diagnosed in the 1987 uh, in a cancer that's called uh, Hodgkin disease. And uh, in Israel, at the time, they give them THC synthetic in the vein through uh, the treatment to see if the THC synthetic will help them on the vomiting, on the weakness, and all the stuff that chemotherapy done at the time. Those discoveries were made about uh, 50 years ago, almost 60 years ago. And uh, Professor Mishulam knew already decades ago of the impact and the positive effect that cannabis has. I work in chemistry, and my interest is the chemistry of the compounds that are found in plants and particularly in cannabis. Professor Meshulam have began to work with cannabis when most of the Asians in the world didn't uh, thought of this direction. He's the pioneer, he's the beginner. In the late uh, 50s, early 60s, the people, the administrator of the Weizmann Institute uh, just found uh, somebody in the police said, can you give us cannabis for research? And the policeman on the other side said, can we rely on him, meaning me? And the um, administrator who barely knew me, of course you can rely on him. He said, okay, let him come over. So I went over and got five kilos of hashish, uh, just like that. Then it turned out that we had broken the law, both I had broken the law and the police had broken the law. We needed an approval from the Ministry of Health. But even they were okay. The main difference is really in the fact that in other areas, science is the key element. If you have the right science, the right knowledge, you know where to go. Cannabis is more in the public area. Public has a strong impact on cannabis, so it is a conflict. With a colleague, we were working at that time, we used modern methods to separate the many components that are present there and uh, we wanted to know uh, whether all of them are psychoactive, they cause all the effects that are known for cannabis, only some of them. In order to do an experiment we did it on ourselves. My wife cooks very well and we put 10 milligrams of the compounds on, uh, on the cake we found out that THC tetrahydrocannabinol is psychoactive in humans and um, those that got the 10 milligrams of THC, which was a little bit too high, uh, got some kind of effects and the others, of course, didn't get anything. What's happened is I got uh, allergic to this uh, THC synthetic. They allow me to smoke it. They give me a corner uh, that I will sit in there and smoke my cannabis. When they understand that I have to walk around with the hashish and I have to smoke it at home and use it as a medicine, 
Uh, my doctor wrote me a letter because there is no shop to buy hashish. They went to a court and they called all the, the police and uh, we get the hashish that the police used to uh, catch. The advancement Israel has is not only because of the good science that was made back then, it is because the regulators in Israel was courageous enough to allow the use of cannabis even if uh, the field is not fully understood, even before the science is fully in place. So when we proceed later on uh, a decade, we in Israel have a, a fall. Uh, we have a gap between our uh, R&D, research and development, through others. First of all, it's, it's pressuring them to make it by the rules. In, to understand that uh, people ask it as a medicine, people got it as a medicine. The doctors that give the patient medicine are uh, telling to the Minister of Health, listen, it's working good. If you have this kind of medicine, who can have it, who cannot, under age of 18, more than age of 18. They give the regulation in order to control somehow on these new things. basically, in a way, equalizing the status of cannabinoids to the status of other narcotic substance uh, with education to the physicians, education to the pharmacies, uh, and guidance to the industry, to the manufacturer and to cultivators, what are the limitations and the boundaries. And by doing that, it allowed all the industry to progress in the country. That's why they create the IMCA, the Israeli Medical Cannabis in, in, uh, Agency, in order to create these regulations and to give the opportunity to, to discover the medical use of cannabis. So in Israel, you can uh, conduct research. Uh, you can initiate innovative uh, new ideas regarding cannabinoids. And that allows Israel to be in the forefront of research and development with new drug delivery systems, with new clinical trials, with new indications. Actually, they understand that people can use this plan together uh, for their own disease. So the government, little by little, give us you know, more and more diseases to try to see how cannabis is affecting us. In Israel, it's a little bit more than 10 years ago that they started with medical cannabis. And first they allowed it to five patients and they could cultivate it back at home. What I know, one from these patients had Crohn's disease. It took him a long time to find correct strain, which helps him. About uh, more than one year it is, they said these five persons cannot cultivate it anymore. So this patient with Crohn's disease asked Ministry of Health, so please, maybe some grower can cultivate this strain which helps me. They said no. So he lost this strain. His condition returned to the problems and he's trying to find a strain which helps him. And with policy that there are no strains, it is a problem for him. He can find it only illegally. Well, there is a big issue with medical cannabis, not just in Israel, everywhere, because medical cannabis started to evolve without any real regulations, and it became, in a way, uh, a potential problem uh, in a lot of markets. 
And you can overlook to the other side and think that there isn't any problem, but uh, the Israeli Ministry of Health decided to take it sensible approach and treat the problem and not hide it under the carpet. And uh, that basically regulated the market and make it much more safer to the patients. We call it here in Israel medical grade cannabis. That means physicians, doctors prescribe cannabis for several indications, clinical indications, to the patients. They use for this uh, treatment uh, medical grade cannabis. Ten years ago, there was hardly anybody talking about, you know, ADHD and, and sort of these behavioral problems that I, he was exhibiting. A few years passed before I actually gave him Ritalin, and, and I just, I, you know, I, I looked at him and I was like, what? He's a zombie. <laughs> And so I, so I came across this video of a mom on YouTube talking about how she had a child that was exhibiting behaviors of, of autism, of PDD. She was saying something that to me at the time just seemed revolutionary. She was saying that she, she had been given her child CBD. A person that suffers from something, he will go to the doctor. The doctor knows the good clinical procedures about cannabis. He can prescribe in cannabis and the patient will buy it in pharmacy, not in special stores. So I ended up finding one psychiatrist. Um, she did a research and she, she found out that, you know, we're, our request is legitimate and so she supported us and then we would get that license. This is what medicalization is all about. People that uh, use cannabis for medical purposes should not be separated from all the other patients. Now for me, uh, the most fighting thing is the price, because they, ra they raise the price for us. We used to have it as a, a whatever uh, amount that the doctor told you that you will have on the license, cost 370 shekel, but now they, uh, they charge us by each bag, 200 shekel, or some company taking 300 shekel, for each bag. So if you have more than 10 bags a month, so <laughs> your price, it's more than 2,000 shekel a month. So it's not medicine anymore. Uh, today it's paradox that probably on black market, they can buy it cheaper than from drugstore. Cannabis, they don't know anything about that. It can be bad cannabis bacteriologically not good. Maybe there can be from soil heavy metals and simply it can endanger health of the patient. We as the Ministry of Health, our, we are focusing in the, in, the, in the patient, in the benefit of the patient itself. The patient is in the center and the medicalization is for the patient. Right when things were starting to get good and he got balanced on the treatment, all of a sudden, the new reform here in Israel came into play. You know, one day we just woke up and they told us, listen, from now on, you can't continue to get your cannabis from this company, from Tikkun Olam, and you have to be transferred to another company. And so we, we really didn't have a choice. And the fact of the matter is, is that once we moved to this new cannabis company, um, the oils just were not, you know, he was in regression again and they, they weren't good for him. Um, and we're still in that situation now, you know, we're trying to find now new alternatives. When you go to, to a doctor and you have whatever disease you may have, he will tell you, take a specific um, a drug at a dose of 200 milligrams a day. Well, we should have that with cannabidiol. We should know exactly how to be administered. It's not the same for every disease. It has to be well-defined. It has to be uh, a drug parallel to the drugs that are being used today for uh, all the diseases uh, the drugs are being used for. In Israel, 
Well, we regulate all the chain of production. We have a, a IMC, GAP, good agriculture procedures, how to, to, to grow the cannabis in order to get almost a uniform products of different kinds of cannabis, of course. And then the GMP, good manufacturing practices, we have them in Israel. That's why in Israel we don't have a regular cannabis or cannabis for medical uses. We have a medical grade cannabis, and this is all about. Three years ago when we were uh, looking to expand uh, for new fields uh, out of the soil, we decided to take all this knowledge and all the quality culture that we uh, kind of developed uh, during the years into the uh, cannabis field. I think that the Israeli government is seeing cannabis for medical use as one of the important engines for promotion of both agriculture and medicine. For example, one group is working on breeding of cannabis towards elite strains. Another example is a, another group working on agricultural practices of cannabis, asking what kind of light, what kind of uh, fertilization or water the plant needs. Right now the market is very small. There is a huge hype, but most of the companies are petite. And if you want to build a global industry, it's still a couple of years ahead of us. It's much more sensible to sit on the fence to see exactly where this market is evolving and then to make a conscious decision. Nowadays uh, there is a big shortage of uh, good quality medical cannabis in the world. So anything that you will uh, probably grow and uh, pr uh, process you will be able to sell. But that's uh, probably true for the, for the short term, right? And with the time, the, this market will be balanced, uh, supply and demand will be balanced, and then competitive advantage will be achieved only by uh, innovation. I believe that uh, in this decade, they understand, okay, technology is good, but to get back to the land and get back to those small things that is us as human beings, it's also good. The big change is because of that we reduce the barriers of fear. And the barriers of fear, you reduce them or you dismiss them by knowledge. As soon as the knowledge starts to be spreading and people start to talk about it and learn about it and see this is not a plan, it's against you, it's a plan, it's for you, things that became to be a little by little different. But one should try to separate the recreational use from the medical use try the medical use to push it over medicalization, like all the other drugs, and the recreational thing. It's not a medical issue, it's not a scientific issue, it's a social issue, like many other things. It's not for the scientists to decide. It's, this is a very thing for population to decide. For 35 years ago, if you would tell me that in another 35 years, I will go to a pharmacy and I'll buy my deodorant and my pain pillar and cannabis and a bong in the same spot, I will tell you that you took something up here. Sure. <laughs>